This is just a quick follow-up to the previous video. Um, one alert commenter had reminded me that I did not actually check the uh, so-called AC termination or RC termination. So what I've done here is I've used a zero ohm resistor over here and on the ends I put a 100 ohm resistor with a capacitor. Now the capacitor value that I used, um, I think it's about 160 picofarads. And the reason that uh, I did that is the rule of thumb is you take the total length of your transmission line and you double it. So that's 90 centimeters and 60 centimeters is 150 centimeters. And you double it, so that's 300 centimeters. And then you convert that to time, so 300 centimeters divided by 18 is something like 16.6 uh, or so uh, nanoseconds. And what you do is you make that your time constant. So with a 100 ohm resistor, which I use because, of course, we've got a 100 ohm uh, uh, transmission line, that works out to be something like 166 or so picofarads. So I chose 160 picofarads. That was the closest I had. And now we can take a look at the signal, first at the long end, and this is at 20 megahertz. Uh, you can see that the waveform is actually really good. The dips aren't too low, the highs are not too high. In fact, it goes up to 3.3 volts because remember that um, when we go from zero to 3.3, the capacitor effectively looks like a short. And then of course, as it charges up, the capacitor looks more and more like an open circuit until finally it's fully charged and it is effectively an open circuit. So uh, the voltage is going to rise to its maximum value. So um, that is actually a pretty good looking waveform. The thing that is important to note is the time delay. And this is one of the reasons uh, why you may not consider uh, an AC termination is that it does tend to stretch things out a bit. So here we have um, an 11.44 uh, nanoseconds delay between the low and the high. But in fact, maybe if I go from the low to the threshold, which is uh, two volts or so, um, it's actually only 2.3 nanoseconds. So in fact, there's not much of a delay at all. Um, and if I look at the other end, so we go from 3.3 volts down to uh, 0.8 volts is the threshold. So let's get to about 0.8 volts or so. Okay, well, we're, we're, well, well we're, we're almost at two nanoseconds. So, um, in fact, this is, this is a pretty good termination. Uh, let's take a look at the short end now. And the short end looks pretty much identical. So, this is actually a really good termination, I think. Um, so, thank you very much to the commenter who suggested that. Uh, the next thing to try is to see what happens on the end. Um, again, I've chosen the capacitor so that it is for a uh, 150 centimeter um, transmission line. By cutting this trace, I'm only going to get a 90 centimeter transmission line. So the time constant is going to be basically, you know, something like, I don't know, three or four times the length, um, which is okay. Uh, let's go and cut this trace and see what happens. Okay, so I have cut the trace right over there. Maybe you can see it. And let's take a look at what is going on. And that still looks pretty good. So we've got, um, again, the timing looks really uh, quite nice. And everything looks pretty good. So this is a very viable uh, termination, and I think, in fact, that is what I'm going to use for my uh, RISC-V processor. Now, the advantage of that is that I don't actually have to change the design of my RISC-V registers, um, because right now, 
uh, the RISC-V registers just have the chips outputting to the bus um, with no uh, source resistance. So that means that all I have to do is put the RC termination on the ends of the bus and hopefully everything should work out just fine. So um, I guess the next thing that I should try is to make a few more registers and make a backplane for it and see what happens. So I'll see you on that video. Take care. And I can't sing!